Right ladies, I am back with part two of my mini album um, videos. <laughs> um, I did one the other day showing you how to construct these pages. Okay, so go back and follow that. Um, I'm not going to show you the same thing again. Um, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how I have bound them. Now I have used a method called, if you want to, uh, and I will leave a link underneath this video um, after I've uploaded it, I'll get, I'll put a link on to the lady that I've seen do this binding method and she calls it the detached hinge method. Okay, now there's loads of methods out there. Um, there's the hidden hinge, there's the stack them up something or other. Um, I've done the hidden hinge, that's a really useful one. And um, that's come from Cathy Archer, I think, designed that. Uh, and there's different variations. This one is um, a mutation of that, or a, a, I don't know, but this lady's made it to, to suit this kind of mini album because a hidden hinge, I don't know how you'd get it to work on these. Um, so what she's come up with is really good and it is really easy and I am going to use this binding system on all my minis however the construction because it's easier um, you don't need to do um, as much faffing about and you don't need to worry as much it's quite straightforward so you've got your bags here okay these are the flaps so and um, that's the back the back side so if that's the front page that will attach to your cover so you get two pages that you turn one that way so you've got the that's the flap that you put the photo mat and then your next page is that way that's with your your bottom flap and your side flap that makes a pocket so you've got your pocket page and your photo mat flap page okay now um, I'm binding them that I'm binding my album that way but basically, whichever way you want to do it, you get these two middle flaps before you glue anything down and start making pockets or anything. You don't do that until you know what you're doing. So you're getting these two flaps and you're just basically going to stick them together. You're not going to stick them together. You're going to put a piece of card over um, to bind them. And I'll just show you what mine looks like with it bound. I can find one. And you end up with this. Okay? And then you will then stick those down to form your pockets however you want to. You might stick that corner bit down there and leave that open. You might stick both, ed both edges. You might stick, um, that's the top edge, this bottom edge and this edge to make a pocket. Whatever, you do that after you've done this stage. And you don't stick these down until you've done your matting. Okay? So this is your spine. And that, and you do it on each page. There you go, so then that then holds all your album together, okay? So I'm going to roughly show you how to do that. So you get them both together, you make sure you've got them the right way. This is your flap, so that wants to be at the top and then you've got your pocket there. I'm showing you upside down. Um, and then you ch choose your card. Now I have got this card here. I've had it gifted from Gemma Lou, bless her. Thank you Gemma. And it's quite thick. Now they are measured in GSMs, I don't know what GSM it is. I've not really gone and bought a lot of cards, so we don't know about weights, but it's quite thick. I'd say it's bordering on very thin chipboard, it's that it is really good. And I would say that when you're doing these mini albums, um, I do it in a way that saves um, cost on expensive papers and I'll explain that later on but one thing I would invest in is make sure you use decent card just for you, even if it's just for your spines because it will help keep it together when you're opening and closing your pages it'll stop it from falling to pieces so some things you can't scrimp on some things have to be decent okay now you could theoretically use any kind of thing card you could use cereal box you could use anything because you're going to cover it anyway, most of it. Um, so theoretically you could use anything, you can use recycled pr products, not a problem. So what you do is, you measure these flaps. Now on these mini bag albums, anybody that's um, got these recently um, to do this, I know there's a couple of you out there that are wanting to do one. Um, these measure four and a half inches, these, wide, okay? Now, the way I've done it, if you look at my 
at the back side of my spine you can see I've got it's got just a small ridge what do you call that I don't know what the technical term for that is but like when you look inside there there's just a small let me just try and show you all my flaps and flips and when you shut it there's a small gully a gully I'm going to call it a gully a small gully that I've scored right now there's a good reason for that because if you just stick straight straight across without this little gully your pages might not close properly and you haven't got an awful lot of room for embellishments and stuff so your mini album will close and it'll be like that all wide and silly um, so if you put some gullies in your in your um, these things here oh my god what are they called now <laughs> Oh, and you're binding. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten what I've called them. Um, if you put a little gully in, which I'll explain to you, it, it just it adds structure, it makes it look neater, and it helps your book open and close much, much neater and nicer. So, now I don't like giving massive precise in, um measurements because then when people watch the videos they think oh well I ain't got them bags and I don't want to be writing measurements down and I can't follow you and it's too complicated you don't need to just look at the principle of what I'm saying and adapt it to fit you and fit your your measurements of what bag you've got if you can construct a bag using these flaps it doesn't matter what size they are just adapt what I'm saying and just learn to use this learn to use your ruler right so these flaps here I know measure four and a half inches okay if you're doing this size bag that I got from they're not from B&M Bargains they're from Home Bargains okay I know that these are four and a half inches if your flaps are different just measure the width of your flap okay then you're going to times that measurement by two because you've got two flaps and you're going to you're going to Put the paper over both flaps okay so times that by two so that's four and a half so up to press we've got nine inches in in width but then i want you to add another quarter of an inch for to make a small gully okay so it's nine and a quarter okay inches so you would get your piece of card that you're going to use you measure it for the height this one just happens to be the right height, which is seven, seven inches. So you'd measure it at seven inches. Just double check. Yeah, that fits fine. Then you'd measure, I've pre-folded this card for another reason, I don't know why. So then you'd measure four and a half inches. Okay, then do a score line. Right, so I'm going to do that. So let's have a look, I'll show you every little bit if I can. So let me measure. Okay. I'm going to, these mats are very useful because they help you get your piece of paper straight. So, four and a half is there. So, if I line it up on my mat, it takes me to that measurement there. So, that's four and a half. I don't have fancy scoreboards. I've got one that Geraldine gave me. Um, that does inches and then I've got this which is a, a thing for cutting down photos that you can buy in the pound shop that's got quarter inch scores on so I use I do use that it is helpful so at four and a half I'm gonna score I don't have a fancy score tool neither just use any blunt object if you're using thick card it can withstand a right good score if you've got a scoreboard all the better you'll do it much quicker and uh, you probably won't have to go up and down as much but you get the same effect okay give it a right good squeeze okay again I don't have a fancy tools me okay then after you've done that score you would do another squat squat <laughs> Another score at a quarter of an inch. Now I don't have a fancy score bag, so again I'm going to do it here. I'm just going to line it up on here, and I know that these grooves are a quarter of an inch. Maybe you've got a fancy scoreboard, in which case 
after you've scored at four and a half inches score at the next quarter inch just let me line it up right so that you've got a score of four and a half inches and then another score of a quarter of an inch that's not doing it on that Oh my god, get off. Get off. Okay. I'll just use what I can, me. Yeah, right, so there I've got my scar. And then you fold that over. So then I've got a scar at four and a half and then a scar at another quarter of an inch. Okay, so then you're ending up with a gully down there. And then obviously you measure between that quarter of an inch, you want another four and a half inch, which is up to, close it out of the way, four and a half inch. Just use your ruler, it's not, not difficult. Takes me up to there. Let me just double check it. Four and a half. I'm gonna give it straight on my on my mat. Four and a half. It takes me to there. Takes me to that measurement. Make sure it's straight. Get it all lined up. I love these cutting mats because there's no no way you can cut one k because you just line it up with all your squares. And there you go. That spine. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. That's your spine. Look with your little tiny gully that you've scored. And then you'd stick that to one flap and that to another flap. So let's get back to us flaps. Let's <laughs> get us flaps back. Where are they? Where am I? That way. <laughs> so I just took that under there for now. So there are your flaps. So you will stick one to there. Very carefully. Starting at the edge there to get it lined up okay and then that will stick down on there nice and neatly and you'll end up with that okay so then start sticking your next page on and because you've measured it you shouldn't need to line be worrying about lining anything up just match that corner with that corner like that and stick down that will already be stuck. I'm not gluing mine because these are just spares. I don't want to waste them. I'm just showing you. So you match them two corners up, stick them down, press, and then them two pages will be held together. That's it. That's all you do. And then you shut that nicely. And you've got another flap and you get your next page and you do the same. Okay? So if anybody's not clear about that, that's what you end up with with that little nice scar just make sure you do the scar because otherwise your pages will not shut nicely and you won't have room for your embellishments that's all you do okay right um, which then leaves you with a nice bound book with lovely pages that open now I haven't stuck all of mine down yet because I'm doing the matting okay now I'm going to come back and show you about matting on another video all right ladies right so that is called the detached hinge it is not my idea i have um learned it off another lady and i will leave the link below that's it for now i'll come back on later and i'll show you how i've done my matting to uh, maximize um imaginative use and not waste expensive papers and also how to do some um nice tags um really cheaply right ladies Thanks for watching. Um, let's hope it uploads in less than um, like three weeks. <laughs> Bye for now. I'll see you soon. Take care.